Hey guys, Erwan Yusuf here, and today we're talking about eggs. 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 And my favorite way to cook an egg is a soft boiled egg. But I always sometimes get it right, I sometimes get it wrong, my friends get it right, my friends get it wrong. It's so inconsistent, and I feel like we just need to set metrics and rules for it to be able to execute it all the time really well. There's a lot of things that come into play. Number one is definitely all about temperature. So how do we make the perfect soft boiled egg? Well, there's lots of different metrics, asides from where your eggs come from, the size of the egg, the circumference, the radius. You know, there's so many things that come into play on how something is cooked the same style or the same way each and every time you do it. But there are certain things that we can do to try to level up the playing field and make it just easier for everyone to learn how to cook a perfect soft boiled egg. And when you do it properly, a soft boiled egg in the morning with some toast and some salt is one of the best things you could ever have in your life. It's absolutely delicious. So let's talk about temperature first on how an egg is actually cooked. There's two parts of an egg, right? There's this little guy here, and then there's this little guy here. Is that what it looks like? That's what it looks like to me. So what happens here is this egg, the yolk will cook from anywhere from, I think it's 65 to 70 degrees Celsius, whereas the yolk will coagulate at 60 to 65. So therein lies your biggest and first problem, is that the yolk and the white cook at different temperatures. The white being at the exterior actually coagulates much faster in terms of temperature compared to the yolk inside. But how do we all want our eggs? I personally like having a, a perfectly kind of silky white that's not too firm and not too chewy, and just a yolk that clings on for its dear life to the white skin that's still there and kind of just runs free once you open it. And I think as poetic as that sounds, that's the perfect egg for me. So this is the ideal egg we want. That's why a lot of people say because 65 and 65 are both in the spectrum of coagulancy of the egg is why it's considered to be the perfect egg to be at 65 degree Celsius. But you can only truly do a 65 degrees Celsius egg using one of these. This is one of the best machines that you could ever have. It's an immersion circulator, and this is what's used to make sous vide kind of like dishes or sous vide cooking. What it does, it, it keeps the temperature of a water bath at an exact temperature for an exact number of time. So what happens when you put an egg like this, when this is set at 65 for an hour, the whole egg is 65 degrees. And that is quote unquote the perfect egg. But the white is also very kind of soft as well because if, if you've ever had a 65 or 63.5 degree egg, you'll see that the white and the yolk have a somewhat more similar consistency. But if you're like me, you want the white to be a little firmer than the yolk. So we're gonna cook it the traditional way in some boiling water, but we're gonna do so in a way that we're controlling the steps and making sure that we're setting up and creating the best absolute conditions to make the perfect soft boiled egg. Now that our water is boiling, we're gonna reduce it just a little bit. We don't want it to be like a super high kind of boil. We want it to be like a boiling simmer. What I didn't realize before starting this is that we ideally should have pots, I guess, of the same size to make sure that everything's consistent. But I only had two of these, I only had one of these. So hopefully it works out. Let's check the temperature just for fun. I don't think this will help us in any way. I've got 98, 99, degrees centigrade over here, so right yeah, around 99. This one here, 97 point something, and about 97.3. So we're gonna go ahead and drop these in. I've got six eggs. We're gonna try five minutes, five minutes 30, six minutes, six minutes 30, seven, and seven minutes 30. The reason I'm doing this in three different pots is because if we were to add six eggs into one pot, the temperature of that water would drop dramatically and would not then be the same for each egg. But if I take two eggs and put them per pot, hopefully I have something quite steady. So what's also really important is that these came out of the fridge. And I'm gonna tell you why that's important. It's because once it comes out of here, 
you know the temperature of your fridge. So at least you know what that change is gonna be from here to here. Your fridge probably doesn't change temperature very much, but for sure the outside does. So if I'm gonna start something at room temperature, that can vary so much from in the Philippines, 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. Whereas if I take it straight from the fridge, we're starting at a steady anywhere from one to four degrees Celsius. So it's not too much of a variable. So I'm gonna start my stopwatch and try to do this as quickly as possible. And let's start. Super important, I have some ice water here so that when I'm done with the eggs, I'll mark them, place them in the water bath, and then that should stop the cooking completely, and then I should get a better gauge as to really when did the cooking stop and what's the best egg. Okay, moment of truth. Uh, now we need to open all of them. This is where I'm gonna break things. I feel like we had a we had a mishap. One of the batches of water, rather, has a little milkiness in it. So one of the eggs, I think, might have broken it, which ruins the whole experiment. It was one of the six-minute eggs. Like, I feel like a little bit cracked. Oh well. You just have to be really careful when you put the egg down into the water. So we're gonna start first with our test egg. This was the one I made a little like uh, ovulation style drawing on. Crack it, see what happens. I feel like this might be really, really liquid. This is a five minute egg. This is where it gets complicated. Yep. I can see that the white is not fully cooked already. Yeah, that's completely undercooked. All right, that's the five minute egg. Five minutes and 30 seconds. That's always the tough part. Don't break, don't break, don't break. All right, five minute egg. Looks pretty good. Six minute egg. Ooh, for some reason, this one seems much more fragile. Maybe the water in pot one was much hot hotter. It was on the bigger fire, so that could definitely be a possibility. Yep, see? It's exactly what I was saying, friends. That temperature makes a huge difference. So this one is our, this is our six minute egg, but it looks exactly like the five minute egg at a higher temperature. I think this one was going at around 99 degrees Celsius, and this one was going around 97 degrees. That's definitely not cooked. Six minute 30 egg looks pretty good for now. Pretty easy to peel, not as pretty as the, so the water was definitely wrong. There was something wrong with the water in pot number two. Very easy to peel. And finally, the 730. Moment of truth, we'll cut it open with a knife and then see what happens inside. Okay, so we'll start with the five minute egg. Yeah, see, that was not a clean cut at all. Egg white here is not set at all. That's completely undercooked. Definitely not what we want. Here, we seem to have which one I think is probably gonna be my favorite. This is the five minute 30 egg. Good yolk, but you see how the white, actually the white is still kind of flimsy in there. The yolk is not bad but the white isn't at its peak form. This one, I believe, is the one we had an issue with. This is the six minute egg. We can tell it's completely undercooked. That's not what we want, so we'll keep that on the side. We'll remove that because we're gonna use all these eggs later in an omelet so we don't waste anything. Next here, we have the six minute 30 egg. This one definitely broke in the water. So that, you can see the yolk is all over the place, so not what we want either. This is the seven minute egg. Yolk is more set, that's not bad. Like nice coagulation, the yolk is a little kind of like thick, but that's not bad, that's seven minutes right there. Um, I think I could do with this, this is not bad, but I'd want the yolk to be slightly more runny, but this is already such a good job. And then finally the seven minutes 30 egg, which is also quite a nice soft boiled egg. So this tells me a lot. So the seven minute egg here looks like the best one. Oh, it's delicious too. The white is cooked perfectly. The yolk 
See, my problem with the yoke is that I can actually remove it with my fingers like that, which is not what I want. I wanted something a bit more runny. I do have a theory that pot two was sabotaged by someone. Oh, we're only two in this studio, so maybe Yuman or I don't know. Someone sabotaged it. But I feel like pot two had the best potential and it had the worst results. So we have the theory, we have the idea, so now we're actually gonna test it out and see if it actually works. So I'm gonna get some water again to boil, bring it down to roiling simmer, so like a really aggressive simmer, but not like a big bubbly boil. And I'm gonna put back an egg in there and I'm gonna keep it in there for exactly six minutes and 30 seconds, put it in the ice bath and hopefully it comes out perfect. Let's check the water. We're currently at 99.7.6. This is the true test of patience. I don't know why I'm shaking, am I so nervous? Um, ready, we're gonna do six minutes 30 and go. So it's six minutes 10, I have a hunch that six minutes 20 is gonna be more than enough. 22, 623, 625, 626, 29, 30. Out, into the water. I usually like to leave it in the cold water, anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds, just as long as you can already hold it with your hands. It's the most important, just to make sure that the cooking's all done. But obviously when you're eating eggs, you wanna eat them warm or hot, right? Okay, good to go. Let's crack this bad boy open. My heart's beating way too loud and much louder than it should ever be for an egg. So usually a soft boiled egg, people would actually eat in its shell, but for the purpose of this experiment, it's important for me to try to take it out of its shell so you can completely see the consistency of inside the egg, which is why I'm deshelling it. But if you're someone who eats their soft boiled egg by cracking the top and then eating with a spoon, I think five minutes to five minutes 30 would actually be good for you because some people still want kind of some runniness with their egg whites. But if you're like me and like the soft boiled egg, maybe on like toast or some sandwiches, something that you can hold your hands and then break and get it nice and gooey, then I think six minutes 30 is the egg for you. That for me, was pretty good. You see how the yolk is nice and kind of like sticky, so that means it's nice and heated up. It's almost gelatinous, but if you look at the white, the white's completely cooked, but there's some parts of the white that still come out, but, but it actually is white in color rather than just transparent and gooey. So the white is actually completely cooked here, and you see how kind of the yolk detaches from the white here? So it's still kind of very soft and perfect. For me, this is my perfect soft boiled egg. That's my egg. I <laughs> hope that little experiment helped you out. Uh, try it out at home, or don't, because I tried it out for you and kind of figure out what you like the best. And surprise your family next time. Surprise your loved one. Make them eggs. Show them you love them. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Peace out.